Could this be your Goldilocks respirator? It can protect you from particulate hazards, from nanoparticles, from 3D printing, and also airborne disease and other things as well. Basically, particulates only, but it's really effective. It gives you great filtration, but you don't have to work hard to breathe in it. With a mask like this, a traditional elastomeric mask, you've got to use your own respiratory effort to draw the air through the thick filters. Whereas, well, this does that for you with the built-in fan. It's got a battery pack that's separate to make this lighter, and it's also got a clear face shield so people can see you when you talk, helping you get past uh, mask identification issues, and also to be understood more clearly because people can see you talking and there's just a thin film here in between your mouth and the person listening to you. Unlike wearing this elastomeric mask that has thick plastic and valves and filters in between you and the person you're talking to. So we're gonna examine this in the context of other respirators and see if it might be the right one for you. Now, this unit comes with a configuration they think is appropriate for consumers. This is a lightweight version with what they call the DLC, or Disposable Lens Cuff, which is just a fancy way of describing this uh, replaceable thin sheet of plastic that you can see through, and this uh, film here that comes under your chin to form the seal. Now, uh, reports from one person says that they've gotten, I think, 40 or 50 hours worth of use out of this although the recommendation is going to be you know, for fewer hours than that. Um, some things to consider also, the filters are kind of expensive to replace, but they last for a very long time, so that could wind up costing you less or more depending on how much you currently spend on masks. It has a separate battery pack that helps keep some of that weight off of your head. Um, it has replaceable little uh, headbands to go inside, and it has a charger. Now, one of the things to consider as well is how much does it weigh? Uh, 737 grams um, with the weight of the cable. So that is you know, more than you might want, but it's, it's not necessarily a lot more than some other options. Um, just to give you an example. So this is a hard hat that happens to have earmuffs, so it's not the lightest hard hat, and it's got a visor. Uh, this one comes in at um, 876 grams. So this weighs less than this hard hat, but it also weighs you know, a lot more than this lightweight foam bicycle helmet, which is 342 grams. So it's not as light as it could be, but it is also you know, not as heavy as it could be. Now, if we compare this to other possible solutions, let's take a look at those, the, the weight for those. This is the 3M VersaFlow. It's also a powered air purifying respirator that many people are gonna consider uh, when they consider the Max Air Cuff. It is a little bit heavier in total than the Max Air system, but there is less weight on your head when you use this configuration because there's no blower up here. And this head top, let's see, it is 212 grams, so that's a lot less than the uh, Max Air Cuff. And this is a pretty sturdy system, and sometimes you can get these sort of surplus for $500 or less, but not always. Brand new, they cost well over a thousand. So it's an expensive solution. This is a clean space halo. This is a tight fitting powered air purifying respirator so that even if the blower should fail or the battery uh, goes out, it will still protect you like an elastomeric mask um, that you normally draw the air through with your own breathing effort. So it does have some advantages but it also has some disadvantages. Your eyes are not protected with this particular model with this half mask. Um, and um, it doesn't have a replaceable battery. When that battery no longer holds a charge, if it's not under warranty, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just gonna have to discard the blower unit and get another one. We are gonna compare this in terms of uh, speech intelligibility with the other units. Okay, so this is the clean space Halo. It seems very really loud to me, uh, just based on the way I'm talking. Um, the on-demand blower is more noticeable, I think, than a continuous blower. Um, let's find out how loud it is with this SPO meter. So that was the Clean Space Halo. Uh, I don't know how it sounded to you uh, on this microphone that's in a normal distance apart, but uh, you can tell me in the comments. The uh, sound pressure level was 71 in this year, but the blower apparently is on this side and it was 82 over in this year. We'll compare that to the other ones. This is the VersaFlow um, with the soft top. It 
seems like it's a lot quieter to me. Uh, that's subjective. You can tell me how it sounds on this microphone. Um, but uh, it doesn't sound as loud in my ears as well, and I like the continuous flow. Uh, it's less annoying. Let's see how loud it is. So 54 decibels at uh, fan level 1. Let's ramp up the fan level and see if it gets any louder. All right, this is fan level 2. I don't know if you can hear a difference at the microphone or not. Um, doesn't sound much different to me. Let's check the volume levels. All right, 58. So it did go up by a few decibels from the fan level 1, but still quieter than the peak levels of the clean space. All right, I've got the Max Air cuff on, and um, it's a little bit louder. Um, well, not surprising because there is a fan and a blower right above my head. Uh, still pretty comfortable. Let's see how loud it is at fan level 1 at my ears. Uh, 50 decibels, so a little bit quieter than I expected, even though it seems louder. Now, that could be because of bone conduction. I may be hearing some of that sound directly through my skull in a way that wouldn't get reflected in the decibel meter. All right, this is fan level 2. Um, it sounds a bit louder, and there's a lot more airflow going on. Uh, and I can feel the air rushing out kind of here. Other poppers have uh, outflow panels here, and this one doesn't have that. So let's see what the sound level's like. So uh, 54 decibels, uh, a little bit louder. Let's go to uh, fan level 3. All right, this is fan level 3. Let's see if it's any louder. All right, 56 decibels is the peak reading on this. So still pretty quiet, at least to my ears. And you can let me know if it's any louder on the microphone. The Max Air Cuff is considered a loose-fitting powered air purifying respirator. And it's designed so that you don't have to have a super tight fit for it to work. You don't need a fit test, you just turn it on and it works. But let's take a look and see why that is the case. We're going to use this pressure transducer to take a closer look at how the fan maintains positive pressure inside the, uh, well, inside the lens compartment of this mask so that you always have air pushing out around the seal to keep unfiltered air from going into the seal. All right, I've put on the Max Air Cuff. Let's go ahead and plug it in to turn it on because there's no on-off switch. So, by holding my breath, you can see that we were idling at around 32 pascals. That's actually lower um, than some of my other powered air purifying respirators, but it's still above zero. Let's take a look at what happens when I do heavy or deep breathing. it's still staying above zero, so we're still maintaining positive pressure, even if not a lot of positive pressure. Okay, future me here making an addendum to the review. And that's because when I used my MaskFit testing machine to test this, I wasn't getting good results. Since this is expensive and it's NIOSH approved from a reputable company, I thought my machines must be broken or that I was doing something wrong. And I tested with multiple machines and did all sorts of experiments and eventually it turned out it was this unit and my machines were doing their job telling me about a problem. And the problem was that the filter was installed wrong at the factory. Now, when I took it apart, what I had found was that this filter cap here was um, not pulled all the way down. So air was able to leak in through a gap like that. Now, I didn't know to check the filter because, of, well, why would I? It's factory installed by experts. However, if you have one of these units, um, one of the earlier units here, when this cap is on top and it's installed correctly, it's translucent. And you can actually see the filter and you can tell if it's been pulled down correctly all the way by looking through the translucent part of the um, cap here. So if you have one of the earlier versions, please do that and make sure that the filter is pulled all the way down so that you won't have any leaks through this uh, grid here. Now, if you're buying one of the new consumer units that they're distributing um, through their web store, this shouldn't be as much of a problem because, well, they actually have a new design that they uh, sent me after I reported this problem. Apparently, it was underway already. Now, let's take a look and see what that is and why it makes a difference.
underneath the old filter cap is this cage here, which it sticks to. To upgrade the filter, they also upgraded the cage. This is the new filter and this is the new cage and the difference is that now this filter has little snaps that correspond with holes here on the cage. So when you put this on, you're gonna get a secure fit. And they've also added a foam uh, sealing material around the perimeter so that you can actually get a really positive seal which will fit underneath this line here, this little pinch seal ring. So when I put this on, if I can orient it correctly here, I've got a little snap right up here and this is going to fit on that. And there's another one over here. And one over here. And I can just pull it all the way down. And then when I seat this over the top of it, we're gonna have a much more secure seal than on the old filter. So this is what is supposed to ship out with all of the consumer units, and I think it's a huge improvement, and uh, this should solve the issues that I ran into. But if you have one of these older units, please check and make sure your filter is installed correctly. Okay, I am now wearing the new improved filter that has the foam seal and the snaps, and we'll see how it fit tests compared to the previous one. The fit test result shows us how much cleaner the air is inside the papper compared to outside. In this case, 2,634 times cleaner, which is about 99.96% total filtration efficiency. That is very protective, and about the same that I get with a 3M VersaFlow with a soft top, like the one shown earlier in the video. Overall, I really like the Max Air Cuff. It got me a better fit factor with a new uh, improved filter that has the foam seal on the snaps. It's exactly the kind of improvement that I was hoping they would make um, when I found the problem with the older style, and they did, and it makes a difference. And uh, I no longer have any concerns about the filter not being installed correctly. And um, I like the way it works, especially when it comes to communication. Your ears are uncovered, so you can hear well. The thin lens lets you speak through it well and be understood. People can see you and they can hear you. Uh, and the fan is quiet so that doesn't drown out what you're saying. It doesn't look fiercely industrial. It's kind of modern looking. And uh, some people have customized these uh, by painting over the caps. So it helps it be more accepted than if it was a big, scary, industrial looking papper. Now there are, you know, um, Limitations. This is not a heavy duty PAPR. This is a PAPR 100, not a PAPR HE. So it's not meant for heavy filter loading. You wouldn't use it in a rock quarry um, where you have a lot of silica dust. This isn't meant for that. This is for lighter quantities of dust, but it still has the same requirement for filtration level. So overall, if you need a lighter duty PAPR, this I think is a good choice if you can afford it. Um, and that is, a, uh, that is an issue. This is $1,400, uh, the kit. It has everything you need to get started. But if you wanted a spare battery or if you need uh, to replace the battery, $362, that's, that's kind of ridiculous. It, it seems like it shouldn't cost more than 50 or 100 at the most. It's only a 32 watt hour uh, battery for that price. These cuffs, uh, the lens with the cuff, $240 for 40. But an experienced user has said they get about 40 or more hours of use out of each one. So, you know, not that expensive when you break it down, but still to, to buy a box of replacements is expensive. Although they um, have talked about maybe selling them in smaller quantities instead of the industrial quantity. So that should make that a little bit easier. But overall, if you don't need impact protection and if you're not in a heavy uh, dust environment, this is a really neat choice.